Now, time is running out to extend the Bush tax cuts, and today the chairman of the House uh, Republican Campaign Committee predicted no action until after the November elections. Congressman Pete Sessions from Texas said a Republican takeover of the House would force the Democrats to agree to a tax cut extension for all Americans and not just those earning less than $200,000 a year, which the White House favors. Our next guest says the Republican position is the best plan to help revive the economy. Robert Barrow is a professor of economics at Harvard University also a fellow at the Hoover Institution, uh, a senior fellow at the Stanford Hoover Institution. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Let me ask you, though, first of all, we've been hearing from a lot of economists, not just the administration, that uh, tax cuts for the middle class and even the uh, lower income earners ha have the most bang for their buck and that when wealthy people get tax cuts, they tend to just save that money rather than spending it out in the economy. Why do you disagree? You know, that's a very Keynesian perspective. You just look at uh, how people respond to disposable income in terms of their consumption. It's better to think about the tax system in terms of the incentives that it creates. And the incentives are actually stronger at the top because the marginal tax rates are already the highest there. And the empirical evidence is that you really get the biggest effects at the top. But I would favor extending all of the Bush tax cuts. Uh, Wait, wait, Professor Barrow, what evidence do you have that you get the biggest bang for your buck at the top 2% of the population? I guess the best evidence on that came from the 1980s Reagan tax cuts. Uh, most of the tax cuts in the 80s did result in lost revenue for the government, but the one place where it seemed like you got such a good response in terms of uh, taxable income that you actually got more revenue at the top when you cut the rates there. So you mean it's incentive to high income earners to earn more and then they end up paying more in tax revenues. Is that, is that what you're saying? So partly it's incentive to work more, to enhance productivity, and it's also a big incentive to investment. And I think we should be focusing now more on investment, which is critically low in the U.S. That's more important, really, than increasing consumption. Uh, uh, let's switch uh, gears just a little bit to one of the president's recent proposals uh, that is uh, accelerating depreciation for investment um, at businesses. We have heard from uh, former Reagan economist David Stockman that this uh, is going to be much like cash for clunkers and only pull, pull demand forward. But you uh, disagree with that as well. You know, I think accelerated depreciation allowances, that's a sensible long-term proposal. That should be a permanent part of the tax system. I think it's going to have a very limited effect, however, in the current environment in terms of expanding investment demand. That's particularly because nominal interest rates are close to zero now. So then it doesn't make that much difference whether the depreciation allowances occur uh, today, which would be true under the accelerated plan, or if they're more deferred. It, it, would, it doesn't make that much difference. But you do think, I mean, it's a good proposal. Let me ask you what you think the best thing uh, the president could do right now to boost the economy and to, uh, and to help the joblessness problem lower unemployment. What do you think the best policy prescription would be? First thing you should say is that the Bush tax cuts stay, that that's sort of, uh, something that's not, go not going to change, is going to re remain intact at least for the next couple of years. Although, the, although we're, Un Professor, we're used to those tax cuts. We live with them. They're pretty much normal. So... It's not like we would get more incentive or they would boost growth, right? Yes, it's really avoiding a negative effect that would occur if we went back to the pre-Bush uh, tax era. You know, on the unemployment side, I think it was a big mistake to move to this 99-week eligibility. It's essentially subsidizing long-term unemployment. And you can see in the data it's had an effect, particularly in increasing the fraction of the unemployed who are long-term, more than 26 weeks. Well... <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but, you know, after all the bailouts of Wall Street and so on and so forth, I mean, giving a little bit of a handout to the millions unemployed, to me, seems to be not a necessarily bad policy. I mean, how could we not necessarily help out many Americans when we helped out so many others, whether it's the automakers, Wall Street, you name it? I'm not opposed to the unemployment insurance program. It's a program that's been working effectively for decades. But it's had a kind of a trade-off between compassion, which you're referring to, and economic efficiency. And then we had a plan uh, in the past where when there was a recession, there was some increase in the eligibility from 26, usually to 39 weeks, okay. sometimes a bit longer. But now we've gone too far, I think. All right. Obviously, lots more we could talk about. There, there is. Uh, Robert Barrett, thank you so much for joining us. A professor there at Harvard.